What up, everyone? It's your boy, Yvonne. I'm from Walking Testimonies, and I wanted to share a message that the Lord has given me regarding the church, the Christian church. And this message is entitled, The Hive Mentality and Christians. Christians and the Hive Mentality. Now, I'm going to give a quick definition that I found on Google about the Hive Mentality. And it says, Hive Mentality, also known as groupthink, is when a person has a strong tendency to fall for a group decision making. If someone has a hive mentality, they may feel invulnerable and morally correct when they're part of a certain group. They may also not be able to make decisions on their own. Now, when we look at this definition and we see um, what God is literally um, you know, asking us to do, we see that this mentality does not correlate with the Christian life. It does not correlate with the Christian life. It comes to the point where um, a lot of Christians are out here making decisions as a group. A lot of Christians are out here wanting to be partnered with everyone, wanting to please everyone, literally wanting to be, you know, loved by the world. But Christ calls us to be different. He doesn't call us to collaborate with every single so-called Christian. He doesn't call us to collaborate with every single person. God calls us to follow his word. And when people are not following the word of God at 100%, then you cannot, you can't follow them. You know, you can't be associated with those people. Um, people are scared to, you know, actually follow Christ at 100%. People are scared to actually lean on whatever the word of God says. And everyone's, you know, doing whatever they want. Everyone's just, you know, chilling around and living their life how they want. Whereas the Bible says in Psalms 1, 1, the truly happy person doesn't sit with scoffers. That's what the Bible says, you know. The Bible says that bad company corrupts um, good morals. That's all in the Bible. Now, the problem with us Christians nowadays is when one Christian believes in something and God gives them a conviction, you know, let's say, for example, um, secular music. If God tells a Christian, hey, secular music is wrong, when people speak about killing people, when people speak about, hey, I'm having sex before marriage, when people pump out all these these filthiness that the Bible literally says that God hates. It's not even that he just dislikes it. He hates it. And when he speaks about that, now a Christian will have a conviction. And then the group that they're around, their church or whatever, the people around them will have a different conviction. Whereas they say, oh, no, it's okay to do that. No, nah, it's well. Now, whatever the group thinks is what the person's going to think now. And I see a lot of Christians doing that, a lot of Christians moving like that. Now, here are the dangers of this, um, um, of the hive mentality. When the Christians that you're around are doing a, a good thing, yeah, okay, you're going to be doing the good thing with them. You're going to be doing the right thing with, that, uh, with those people. The minute they do the wrong, they do wrong things, you're going to also be doing wrong things with those people. And that is a sin. The Bible says to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. When we're going to be judged, it's not going. To, it's not going to be as a group. It's not going to be as oh, the church of this place, this church building, or that church building. No, God's going to judge you alone, literally. God's really going to come. For, he's going to judge you and, and on everything that you've done. He's not going to say, "Hey, um, Anne over there, or uh, Mark over there at the, at the church with you was doing this or doing that." No, God doesn't work like that. He does not operate like that. God honestly wants you to have a relationship with Him, and that's the problem with us. That's the problem with the church we don't have a personal relationship with christ we follow our families we follow um our parents we follow all, everyone but except for god except for god we don't have a true relationship with god where he speaks to us you know a healthy relationship with him whatever the group does is whatever i do literally i've seen it so many times where people they move as a family people move as um uh, what can i say people move as um as a church people move as a group and it's like okay well what did god tell you though um, there's a, a lot of influx of sin happening right now. People are doing whatever they want. And why? Because everyone else is doing it around them. But the thing is, if you're set apart and you're called not to be like the world and you're called to be different, why are you moving with other people? A lot of Christians are going to go to hell because they decided to believe in what people beside them were doing and not lean, lean on God on their own. We forget that Jesus Christ is the only, the only mediator between us and Christ, and God. It's only Jesus Christ. There's no other mediator. Your pastor cannot mediate you with um with God. It's impossible. He's a human being. You the people around you, the Christians around you cannot mediate you. So just because people are doing something around you does not mean it's good. Just because everyone is doing something does not mean it's good. And that's the problem with us Christians today. 
we just want to do whatever the world tells us to do. We, whatever the world says, we accept it. If, if everyone's accepting something, then we do it too. Then what does it mean to be set apart then? If you're exactly like the world, if you're exactly like everyone else, if you're exactly like everyone in the church building, everyone in your family, um, your pastor and everything, then what does it mean to be set apart? And that's the problem. There's like an influx of people just doing whatever they want, um, pumping out the worst things, people posting the worst pictures with, a, you know, a bunch of cleavage, people doing whatever they want and, you know, not even glorifying God. And because everyone's doing it, then I have to do it too. And that's the hive mentality. A lot of people are going to go to hell because of the hive mentality. Christians are not called to move in a hive mentality. You're called to be biblical and called to be biblically correct. That's what God calls us to do. God calls us to truly follow him and put him first. Why? What's the whole point of gaining the world's approval? Of getting the whole world even and losing your own soul? And that's the problem with us. We're not going to be judged as a group. You're not going to die as a group. When you're going to die, you're not going to be put in the coffin with all the people that you're with. No. People die at different times. Um, when Jesus Christ comes back, you're not going to be raptured into heaven as, as a group with the people that, you, that you're with. Some people are going to stay. Some people are going to go. And that's honestly what it is. Um, honestly, the church has to wake up. We have to stop moving as a hive. We have to stop moving as, you know, because this church is doing this, because this church is doing that. I have to do it too. No. You have to be able to think for yourself and have a relationship with Christ. You have to maintain that relationship with Christ, meaning reading your word spending time in worship, spending time in prayer, truly seeking God, you know, doing research, you know, for God and praying to God so that he can actually speak to you, so that you can actually have a healthy relationship with him. And when you have a healthy relationship with God, then automatically you're not going to be just following the group around you. You got to ask yourself, what Bible are you reading? What Bible do you read that, that tells you to do everything that everyone else is doing? If one person makes a mistake, okay, I'm going to do that mistake too. Why? Because, you know, we move as a group. You cannot move as a group when you're a Christian. The Bible literally says Jesus Christ came to bring the sword. And what's the sword? It's literally the truth. Literally the truth. And that sword brings division. Why? Because truth brings division. But us as Christians, we're so, we're so soft. We're so, um, what is it? We're so progressive. We're so comfortable in this Christianity. We just wake up, go to church every Sunday. And then after going to church, you know, we go home, we do whatever we want. And it's a, it's such a cliche message, but it's like, are you truly following, are you truly following Christ? Or are you following the people around you? Are you truly doing decisions based off what the Bible says, of what God has told you to do? Or are you following the pastors around you, the people around you? A lot of people are going to go to hell because they follow their pastors. A lot of people are going to go to hell because they follow the people around them. The hive mentality is evil. It's from the devil. And that's the problem. You're not called to move as a hive. You're not called to move as, you know, as groupthink. No, you're called to be biblical. You're called to have a relationship with Jesus, a personal relationship with Jesus. If your pastor makes a mistake and you follow him, it's your fault. Why? Because you should have been meditating your word. You know, if people around you make a mistake and you follow them, it's your fault. Why? Because you should have been meditating your word. You should have had a relationship with Christ. The problem with us is we're too soft. We don't want to be disliked. We don't want to be... um persecuted whereas the bible says that christians will face persecution the bible literally says that the world will hate you the bible literally speaks about the pharisees and jesus and most you know religious christians right now are modern day pharisees they will hate you why because you strive for the truth because they're stuck in a system they want you to be in that system with them people want to do everything as a group but when you look at the bible from isaiah to jeremiah um all the prophets and then you look at the disciples you know the apostles, all these people, you look at how they moved. They didn't move with the whole crowd. No, they did not. They moved together with people that actually served Christ. And they moved in a way that was biblically correct, according to what Jesus Christ had taught them. But the problem with us is that we're not willing to actually make that sacrifice. We're not actually willing to actually say, hey, God, you know what? I surrender everything. I will follow you no matter what people think about me. I will follow you no matter what the trend is. I will follow you no matter what people are saying. Honestly, like... It's very sad. You look at a bunch of things going on in the world right now. You look at all these these Christians, you know, the Christians that just want to be famous. Christians that, that their main goal is to make money and fatten their pockets. Literally, that that's all it is. And we follow these people, you know, because, you know what? Oh, because they make good music. Why? Because they have good videos. Why? Because, oh, they have one or, or two good teachings. But what, what does the Bible say? The Bible says to be separated. To be holy means to be set apart. It means to be separated separated from the world, separated from evil, to be good, you know, to be loving, to truly be kingdom oriented, meaning you actually want people to come to Christ. You actually want people to go to heaven. And it's not about you, but it's all about God. 
it's not all about you being famous. It's not all about you making it or, or you, um, you know, being big, you being known by the whole world, but it's all about God being known. That's the problem with the Christians, uh, the Christians today. And it's crazy because even, you know, the Bible doesn't even call you to be a Christian like that. They call people, you know, Christians because they're Christ-like. But then they, the Bible calls you to be disciplined. It calls you to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. So now where are those people that are going to rise up and truly stand for the faith no matter what? Where are those Christians? Where are those Christians in the day and age where you have Christian women exposing their bodies online and then preaching at the same time? Where are the Christians who are going to say no to that? In the day and age where you have actual Christians, you know, making songs with Beyonce or, or, or you know, like being able to actually enjoy the stuff that come, you know, um, from being known by the world. Where are the true Christians? Where are the true Christians? Can you imagine John the Baptist um, being mixed with the world and being happy that 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 the the preaching of the of the gospel is is contaminated by the world it doesn't make sense where are the true christians literally where are the true christians where are the true disciples of jesus that are going to actually rise up and actually say no where are the christians that are actually going to be set apart where are the christians who are not going to be in a who are not going to move in a hive mentality and the problem is that we forget that the way life is, the way life is actually going, the Bible literally says narrow is the gate that leads to heaven and wide is the gate that leads to hell. And most people are actually going to hell. Most Christians that you see nowadays, the so-called Christians are going to go to hell. And this sounds rough. This sounds tough and everything. But we need this message because honestly, like we got to, we got to return to our, our first love, which is Jesus. Not to the group, not to the church, not to uh, the church building, sorry, not to... um. Our, our pastors, not to, you know, people around us, but we have to return to Christ first and make sure we're actually leaning on God, leaning on his word, leaning on whatever he told us. You will be judged for every single thing that you're doing on this earth, literally every single thing. I will be judged. Everyone else also will be judged as well. But the thing is, when Christ comes back, is he going to say, well done, good and faithful servant? Or is he going to tell you, hey, you delivered demons, you preached, you sang in a choir, you did all these things, but I never knew you. You were online, you're posting Bible verses, um, you, you, you know, you had this and that going on for yourself, but I never knew you. Why? Because you didn't actually surrender everything to God. You were contaminated, you were mixed with the world, and that's the problem with us. We are mixed with the world, and God is asking us to, he's calling us to come out of the world. We're on this earth, but we're not from this earth. The Bible clearly says that there's a separation. There's people who live in sin, and those are literal children of the devil. You can go read it in First John. And then there's people who do not practice sin because sinning is not in their DNA, and those are child of children of God. Literally, there's children of God and there's children of the devil. It's not everyone who calls themselves Christians who's a child of God. No, some people live in sin. I like how much Christian like I I'm, I haven't been on on Instagram for a while, and I come back on Instagram, and the amount of people that call themselves Christians that are exposing their bodies on 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 social media exposing their bodies and then talking about God after. The amount of Christians that want to be famous, literally just want to be famous. They don't really care about advancing the gospel. They don't care about the kingdom. They, they don't focus on evangelizing. They just focus on singing, doing concerts, um, making people pay for certain things. But to really advance the kingdom is not even in their hearts like that. And that's the problem. That's the problem with us today. We're, we're not actually Christ focused. We're not kingdom focused. We're business focused. We're commerce focused. And if you don't actually know the first person to do commerce that they read about in the bible is literally the devil when you read in ezekiel it's literally the devil he's the, he's the first commerce man we you know that the bible speaks about literally and that's the problem it's like do you truly love god or do you truly love the world what's the point of gaining the world and losing your soul do you want to live for god or do you want to live for people do you want the world's approval or do you want god's approval do you want to be rich you know fat in your pockets make money and then die and then burn in hell or do you actually want to please god you got to pick a side I'm talking to every Christian person that's going to listen to this or every so-called Christian that's going to listen to this. How are you on Instagram and you're exposing your body as a woman? How are you on Instagram and you're exposing your body as a man? How does that make sense? And you're making people lust. And then you tell yourself, oh, um, the person's not supposed to lust anyways. I can do whatever I want. Okay, well, what Bible are you reading? The Bible clearly says that, you know, people should, you know, literally dress modestly. And then the Bible also says that, um, the Bible says to love your neighbor as you love yourself. God gives, Jesus Christ gives a new commandment to his disciples and he says, hey, I give you a new commandment. You must love others as I have loved you. How does it make sense? Now, for those who are, um, what is it? For those who are trying to go on Instagram, you know, 
and have a good time or whatever. And then you, we were seeing your, your chest, your butt exposed. We were seeing you in bikini pictures. We were seeing you, you know, like working out and doing whatever you want. How does that make sense? Is God really pleased with you? So you, you pray to the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit told you, yes, go online and go expose your body to people. It's a spirit. It's a demonic spirit that's inside of you guys. That's influencing some people literally to do these type of things. And why? Because the contamination of the world. And God is not happy with that. So the problem is that if you die, you will literally burn in hell for doing stuff like that. The Bible literally says, those who cause my little children to, to fall, it is better for an anchor to be tied around them and for them to be thrown into the ocean. Do people not understand this stuff? Where's the true love, you know? Where's the true love of the, of the, of the Christians, honestly? So honestly, we really have to stop doing this group thing. We really have to stop um, running to our pastors, running to people before we run to God. We have to run to God first, read the Bible, make sure that we're actually doing things according to Scripture, make sure that we're actually doing things with a good heart, you know, with an actual good heart and truly seeking God and not seeking what other people are doing. A lot of people are, are going to die because they put their trust in a pastor. The Bible literally says, curse is the man who puts his trust in a man. Like literally, you have to put your trust in God. The Bible says, trust in God. Um, um, lean not on your own understanding, but trust in God. And he'll literally guide your path. Literally in Proverbs 3. And that's how we should move as Christians. This is how we have to move as Christians. We cannot move as people of this world. We can't move like every other Christian. We have to move like Christ did. We have to move like the apostles moved in the Bible. And that's the problem. We have to have a separation from people in this world. We're not in this to be famous. You're not. We're not in this to, to have the best-selling song and all this stuff. No, we're in this to actually glorify God and to truly make his kingdom advance. We're here for people to actually be saved and to actually give their life to Christ. We're the salt and the light of the world. We're not called to be mixed with darkness. We're not called to be out here smoking, um, smoking, um, 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 doing murderous things, stealing, lying. We're not called to be doing that. If we live in those ways, we're going to go to hell. It's simple because the Bible says it. I won't say it, but the Bible says it. So you got to pick a side. Are you with God? Are you a child of God? Or are you a child of the devil? Pick a side. Are you a child of the of the enemy that's willing to, to get the fame from this world, get recognition of this world, do whatever you want, and, and you know, leave God at the side? Or are you one of those ch the children of God who are actually going to rise up and say no to the world, say no to contamination, say no to being lucrative, say no to being systematic and religious? Who are you? Pick a side because Jesus Christ is going to come back soon and this world is really going, to, this world is going to hell. This world's going to be rolled up and thrown into the lake of fire, literally. But are you going to be with God or are you going to be with the, with, with, um, with the world, with the devil? Don't let the devil have dominion over you. Repent. Give your life to Christ and truly serve him. Stop thinking as a group. Stop thinking as a, as a hive, but truly have a personal relationship with Christ so that you can stand firm against whatever does not confess God's name. Whatever is evil, you have to step away from. The Bible literally says, this is the last thing I'm going to say, in Proverbs 8.13, to fear the Lord is to hate evil. Literally. To fear the Lord is to hate evil. So now my, my biggest... Um, my biggest um, thing is on, on us Christians. If the Bible says to fear the Lord is to hate evil, then how do we enjoy evil things? How does that make sense? Make it make sense. If Proverbs 8.13 says to fear the Lord is to hate evil, why do we enjoy evil things then? How does that make sense? Like literally, like if we put the math together, the math's not mathing. The Bible says to fear the Lord is to hate evil. So now if we enjoy evil movies, if we enjoy evil music, if we enjoy doing evil things, dressing in, a, in evil ways that even at work, they would not even allow you to dress like that because it's inappropriate. But that's how we dress as Christians. How do we, how do we hate evil? If you don't hate evil, how are you going to make it to heaven? You, you're not, there's, not, there's no evil to do in heaven. Pick a side. You're either with Christ or you're not with Christ. You're either with Christ or you're with the devil. You have to pick a side. God is going to be exposing a lot of people in these days, a lot of people that don't actually stand firm for God's faith, that, that, that are just, you know, named Christians, that are just singers, that just throw concerts, people that are just, you know, um, that are just there to preach and say all these things. But when it comes to actually being rooted in the faith and picking a side, they, don't, they won't pick a side. They want to be known by, by Kanye West. They want to be known by, by the people of the world. They want to be um, friends with these people. They care more about that than they care about Christ um, um, being advanced, literally. Man, we got to return back to the Bible. We got to return back to what God wants. This is not, we're not called to be hive minded. We're not called to be group thinkers, but we're called to be like Christ. We're called to have a personal relationship with Christ. And when you have a personal relationship with Christ, then your actions will show because faith without works is dead. 
your actions will literally show if you truly love Christ or if you don't love Christ. If you're compromising, if you're contaminated by the world and you're living just like the world is, no one, the world doesn't even hate you. They don't even care about you. You're you're random to demons. Then you're just you're just roaming around. But God bless us. Let, let, let us all take the time to actually repent, give our lives to Christ, and truly change our ways. Because Jesus Christ is coming back. Jesus Christ does love us. He did send us something down on the cross. He did die on the cross for us. And we truly have to accept him and truly surrender everything and repent. God bless you guys. Let's stop with the high mentality. Let's run back to Jesus before we run back to any man.